A young man was invited for a seminar. A multi-millionaire. So he came for the seminar. And uh, he said, I need a, a board that I can write some things. So they gave him a board. And he began to write. And then he said something. And somebody got up. And said, uh, I disagree with you. The young multi-millionaire looked at him and smiled. Then he said, Sir, why do you disagree with me? He said, Well, we were taught by our very respectable lecturers that blah, uh, blah, 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 blah. When he finished, the young man said, Could I humbly ask you a question? He said, Yes, you may. And the gentleman said to him, Are you a multimillionaire in dollars? He said, No, sir. He said, Is your lecturer a multimillionaire in dollars? He said, No, sir. He said, Well, I want to teach you how to be a multimillionaire in dollars. So would you now listen to me? He said, Thank you, sir. And sat down. <laughs> Praise God. See, a lot of times, we have an unteachable spirit without realizing it. We start by disagreeing. And when we disagree, we don't know better than the one we're disagreeing with. We say, no, 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 no. Why do you say no? Why don't you listen first? No, 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 no. Well, the one who's teaching you has the results that he's talking to you about. Isn't it better to listen? You stand a better chance to learn. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. So, wonderful. We're talking about the Spirit, the fullness of the Spirit. And then I said, the Holy Ghost has been introduced to us in Genesis. We find this wonderful, precious, third person of the Godhead who is revealed to us first. Hallelujah. And how do we come about that there are three persons in the Godhead? Well, the Bible talks about the Father. And the Bible talks about... Well, first, the Holy Spirit is revealed. Okay? Then we have the Father revealed to us. We have Jesus, the Son, revealed to us. All right? So we do know that there is the Father. Jesus talked a lot about the Father. And then the Holy Spirit. And Jesus. And then there's none other. But in Genesis, we find he reveals to us the Father and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is not revealed in Genesis. Hallelujah. The Father is revealed. He said, let us make man. And there he is called the Lord. And then the Holy Spirit was present. God made man. And then when he released the breath of life into man, he became a living being. And that breath of life is called the Spirit. God's breath is the Holy Ghost. And so he imparted that Spirit into man. And man became a living being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit gave him life. The Holy Spirit gave him life. You can look at the book of Job. Job chapter 26. Verse 13 says, By his spirit he had garnished the heavens, and his hand had formed 
the crooked shepherds. Powerful. Powerful. Praise God. And then let me read another thing here to you. In chapter 33, verse 4, he says, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Did you see that? The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. The Spirit of God hath made me, the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Now, in our lives, we find situations where we want to make some changes. Maybe you want something, you want to add something to your business. You want to add something to your family. You want to add something to your finances. You, want to add, you, you, you just want to make some adjustment for the better. Do you know, do you know that the image of God is in you? Whew. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10 tells us that the image of God is in us. We've been recreated in the image of Him that created us. Amen? We are like Him. You have the image of God in your spirit. You're like Him. His ability is at work in you. You're like Him. What you're not doing is practicing what we are and practicing what we've got. We're not practicing. Instead, we're copying the wrong folks and practicing their way of life. We have to begin to practice. Look at this guys who are doing all these cars and all these things science fictions of yesteryears have become today's reality they were toying with those things until they became real the shapes of toy cars of many years ago have become real today in the same way we can practice spiritual things we are not practicing The word of God is for us to live by. It's for us to do. But to make that happen, we must be fully yielded to the Spirit. We must come to know the Spirit. We must yield ourselves to the Spirit. Yield ourselves to the Holy Ghost. Recognize Him and give ourselves to Him. Can I tell you something? Everything you ever need for your life success to be all that God has fashioned you to be in this world is inside you. Believe it. It will not come from heaven. It is inside you. You carry in you all that you will ever need. All the money you will ever need in this world. In all the currencies of the world, they are in you. Everything you would ever need for a good life is in you. Let me show you something. When you study in the book of Genesis, chapter number 2, and read from verse 18, the Bible tells us that God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I want to make him an help meet for him. So God brought all the animals. God brought all the animals to Adam to see what he would call them. And he gave them all names. And when he was through, the Bible says, there was 
not found a suitable help for Adam. So, what's that to tell us? God wanted him to see if he could find from what was available. God had finished his works. He wasn't going to produce anything new. So he brought everything that was available. He said, look, what do you want? Which one? And he said, there's lion. There's tiger. There's elephant. There's the ant. There's the peacock. There's the cow. None was suitable. Did God say, all right, give me three days, I'm coming. I'm going to check. No, no, no. What did God do? The Bible says, so God caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam. He fell into a deep sleep. And God took a rib from inside his body. In other words... Everything is already available. And the Bible, the Bible says, when he took that rib out, he closed up the flesh. God is neat. No stitches were found. Brought out that rib. The Bible says, he turned that rib into a woman. And he did not need to put the woman down and breathe in. Why? Because there was already life. What? Does, what that just tells us something. Is there something you're looking for and you can't find it around you? Look inwards, brother. Look inwards. Why did God cause a deep sleep to fall upon Adam? Somebody said, because God didn't want him to feel no pains. No. God could do it without any pain. Because he did not want Adam to be distracted. Because when the Holy Ghost begins to work on your life, you must be fully yielded. If you're going to find the Holy Spirit taking something that is already within you and to make a success out of it, you have to learn to yield. Give Him your all. It is in you. What you're looking for is inside you. I said what you're looking for is inside you. Jesus said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers! Yeah, 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 yeah. Rivers! Why is our ministry growing? And why is it going to keep growing? Because of the Holy Ghost. I want to show you something. Because of the Holy Ghost. Why are we reaching people by the masses? Why are we reaching them by the hundreds and hundreds of thousands? And now by the millions? Why are we doing it? Why is it possible? Because in the 44th chapter of the book of Isaiah, thank you Lord Jesus. Let me read it to you. We're reading from Isaiah chapter number 44. You've been there. <laughs> and would you want to? I love it. You know. Those guys like to manifest their idea of heaven and it's beautiful. 
it's just wonderful <laughs> the church building is usually high and you enter hmm. <laughs> what will heaven be like thank you Jesus <clears throat> if we can learn some good things from those people and put with all the good things that we know we will be awesome <laughs> I'm telling you the truth oh thank you Lord Jesus all right listen to this in Isaiah chapter number 44 yet now verse 1 hear O Jacob my servant and Israel whom I have chosen oh thank you Lord Jesus thank you thank you thank you verse 2 thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb which will help thee fear not O Jacob my servant and thou Jeshurun whom I have chosen for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty Huh. I will pour water hey, yeah, 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 yeah. upon him that is thirsty. Not upon everybody, upon him that is thirsty. Thirsty. Are you thirsty? I pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. What do you mean dry ground? He's looking at your hearts, looking at your spirits. Because the Bible says the seed was sown in the good ground. And that ground is the heart of man. It says, I'll pour floods. And Jesus said, out of your belly, your innermost being, your spirit shall flow gushers of living water. Now when that happens, what follows? Let's read. Verse 4, and they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. And then results will begin to come. Look at it, it says, one shall say, I am the Lord's. That means you, become, you begin to win souls. Listen, he says, one shall say, I am the Lord's. And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand. When you say, how many of you want to be born again? He will raise his hand to, to enroll for the kingdom. And so name himself by the name of Israel. That means these ones were not from Israel. That means sinners are being converted unto Christ. When that flood comes into your spirits and begins to flow, he says people will begin to say, I believe in your God. I believe in your God. Some will raise their hands to enroll. Glory to God. Will you shout amen, somebody? Floods. When you yield yourself like that, evangelism becomes supernatural. Why are many not winning souls? Because they're trying in their own, with their own power, trying from themselves. It will not work. The Bible says there is a spirit in man. And the breath, the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So when you begin to speak, that anointing of the Holy Ghost will give them understanding. The Bible says the seeds were lost because they received seed by the wayside and that they are those who heard the word and did not understand. But when the Holy Ghost comes, like Jesus did, the Bible says he breathed upon them the breath of life and he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. And they began to have an understanding of the scriptures. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. We are not ordinary. We're not ordinary. He sent us to win souls. We are equipped. Oh. You know, a lot of times, you know, when you, when you study in the Bible, when you read from Ephesians chapter number 4, and um, um, from verse 11, when it tells us about, he gave some apostles and some prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints now there are some versions that read it the equipping of the saints all right but many times we are made to see the wrong thing when we think of it as the equipping of the saints
versions that read it the equipping of the saints. All right? But many times we are made to see the wrong thing. When we think of it as the equipping of the saints, it is actually better in the way it is given to us in the King James when he studied from the Greek rendering. It actually says for the perfecting of the saints. Now when you say for the equipping of the saints, it means like we are trying to get what wasn't there into there. You, you, you understand it? But when you say for the perfecting, that means that you are bringing them to a maturity. Why? Because the day you received the Holy Ghost, you were actually equipped. We have been fully packaged. We are now learning how to use the equipment. You got it? We are learning how to use the equipment. We are fully packaged. Everything that we require for success has been given to us. We came loaded when we received the Holy Ghost. We are loaded, brothers and sisters. We are loaded for success. We are gone for good. Say, I lack nothing. My spirit is full of God. I lack nothing. I am equipped. Equipped. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Equipped, equipped, equipped. Let's move to, are you ready for the next phase, a higher level? You sure? Okay, let's take one step further. Okay? Let's, let's, let's see something about this equipment. Hmm? Hmm. You know, if God, if God's plan was to change people without their, without their response, then he would have saved the world. Everybody would be born again. But why is it that many hear the word, remember what Jesus said about the sower and the seed and those who receive the seed? He said some fell by the wayside and the birds picked them up. Some fell on hard ground. Some fell among thorns. And some fell on good ground. And that had to do with the spirit. Why? Some people say, why isn't everybody healed? If the power of God is really present, why isn't everybody healed? Well, Jesus didn't heal everybody either. In some cases, everybody got healed. In many cases, everybody wasn't healed. He went to the pool of Bethesda. The Bible tells us that there were so many sick and important folk there. They resorted there. And Jesus came. The Bible records that he healed one man and sneaked out. What about the rest? What happened? Then he went to Nazareth. In Nazareth... The Bible says he could not do any mighty work. He could not. Not he did not. He couldn't. He wanted to, but he couldn't. And when you study it further, you discover if it says he couldn't, it means he tried, it failed. Study it. Take your Bible. Use your interlinear. Follow it carefully. You'd be amazed at your discovery. You mean Jesus tried and it didn't work? Yes. So the Bible says he was amazed. In Nazareth, he marveled because of their unbelief. Their unbelief short-circuited his power. Jesus said it. You have made the word of God of non-effect by your tradition. Can you see it? That's why Three people are sitting, listening to the gospel. One is born again. The other two are wondering what's wrong with him. Is it not just what that guy said you heard? Because it never got into their spirits. Sometimes you have sick folk waiting to be healed. 
Do you remember the woman with the issue of blood? She said, if I may, she said, she said, I don't need him to lay his hands on me. I don't even need him to give me his attention. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be alright. She pressed through the crowd. And got there, sneaked in there, and just lightly touched the hem of his garment, and then decided to leave. And then Jesus said, who touched me? And she stopped in her tracks. She said, Master, I'm sorry. I did, but I'm healed. Others were touching Jesus. No miracle is reported. They were touching him. Jesus said, who touched me? Peter said, Master, what are you saying? <laughs> the crowd throng at thee. Sayest thou who touched me? How can you say who touched me? Everybody's touching you, Master. Look at it. He said, mm -mm, somebody, hey, uh, somebody touched me. Somebody did. Somebody's spirit was open. Somebody received something. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Virtue, power, power. Jesus was loaded. It took faith, the faith of a woman to pull it out. That shows you how God is. God is here. It's your faith that gets a hold of him. your face sometimes you find we're ministering to people and as we minister somehow they don't realize that they have programmed themselves not to receive they have programmed themselves not to receive they don't realize it say nothing gonna happen to me some people say nothing gonna happen to me but their spirits are so open that even before you get to them something happens it's the spirit a lot of us don't know how to open our spirits and that's part of what I'm teaching you. Some are there. They're not saying anything. They believe, they believe, they believe. But their spirits are closed. They are crying for the help. The more they cry, the more they close their spirits. And then they do not receive. that happen why does it happen because God doesn't force people it's up to you it's up to you he said have I not chosen 12 of you and one of you is a devil Judas was a devil all those three years of ministry of Jesus Judas didn't change he was not converted to God he remained a thief. Jesus couldn't change him. Why? Because of his unbelief. He could not. In the same way he could not perform mighty works in Nazareth. Jesus could not change Judas Iscariot. He couldn't. You say, is there anything God cannot do? Yes. The Bible shows. Anything you refuse... To believe God cannot do it for you. Why? Because he has chosen not to break your will. Can you see that? Unbelief. It says you have made the word of God of none effect. The word has become empty, ordinary, because of your tradition, your way of doing things. Brothers and sisters, When we understand who we are and what we have, we will throw away our fears. The trouble is a lot of us call the name of Jesus out of fear, out of desperation. Call that name with revelation. You will see the demonstration of power. Let me tell you something.
when we preach and teach, we release something. The reason for us to pray a lot when we want to go and preach to people is so that the Holy Spirit will prevail on their hearts to be open. Because we have power. And there's life in what we preach. And if God will have mercy on them to have their hearts open, they will receive. That's the reason for our praying and interceding for the lost. So that God will in His mercy position their spirits to hear. Position their spirits to receive the glory that's coming in our divine message. Now, come, stand here. Now watch what I'm telling you. The power of the Spirit, when God opens your spirit to receive. The power of the Spirit is in the air. Many of us don't understand. So we, we have to intercede for the lost. Because when we begin to preach, we release air, we release spirits. The Greek word is pneuma. It means wind. It comes out in the word. I didn't touch him. That's the spirit. spirit do you understand what I'm talking about it's the spirit contacting the man's spirit that's why people fall when, when the spirit contacts your spirit it overwhelms your spirit that's the Holy Ghost contacting a man's spirit they're like signals. And when the spirit moves into your spirit and takes a hold of your spirit, anything can happen. It is used in blessing and it is used in judgment. For God's children, it is used in blessing. Sometimes some of us, even when we're praying and the anointing comes so strong, sometimes... If you're sensitive, you begin to feel like, like a, a whirlwind going around you. You begin to feel it, literally feel it. I feel it sometimes. It's as though there's some wind around you. Sometimes it can be more, more subtle. It just comes and blows over you. And you know that it is not possible for any wind to be present in that place. There's no fan there. There's, how could it come like that? It's the presence of the Holy Ghost. And sometimes because we are not attentive, it comes and goes. Nothing happens. Didn't people arrest Jesus and chain him and take him away, take him away in chains? The same hands that raised the dead. They chained him and nothing happened and he followed them. They saw him as an ordinary man so nothing happened. Their spirits were not open to God. Yet in judgment, he had said, whom do you seek? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I and he. They all fell down and didn't know what hit them. And still got up and arrested him. Because he said, all right, this is your power and the hour of darkness. They were not blessed. They chained him. The hands that healed the sick, cast out devils, cleansed the lepers and raised the dead. Could a man be more condemned than that? Somebody says, if Jesus were the Son of God, how could they have taken them, taken them away like that? They nailed him to the cross. The same man. Whom when a woman taught the very aim of his garment, 12 years suffering from hemorrhage, was healed instantly. The Bible 
Bible says at the particular crusade where Jesus was preaching, he says, virtue went out of Jesus. All men sought to touch him. The same Jesus. And here they were nailing him to the cross because of their unbelief. So when a man does not receive, it is not, the problem is not with the giver. The problem is not with God. The problem is, how open are you? How open are you? As you want to see the best inside you brought out, let the Holy Ghost take over your life. As he took over the life of Adam and produced Eve from within him. You want to see the best of your potentials come to light. Then learn to have the Holy Ghost overwhelm you. He will produce for you something from within you. The best is still in you. I said the best is still in you. I said that the best inside you. The best is in you, brother. There is something about you that the world has not seen before. It's still there. I said it's still there. It's still there. If you let the Holy Ghost bring that thing out, He will bring it to materiality. He will bring it to manifestation. The best is still inside you. It's still inside you. I said it's still in you. It's still in you. It's still in you, brother. It's still in you. of the scripture the Bible says woman is the glory of man and man is the glory of God now which means when the Spirit of God brought that reap out he formed glory for the man for the Bible says woman is the glory of man it's a revelation for the church is the glory of God and the church is the bride of Christ he was speaking concerning Christ and the church his glory can be revealed in your life, brothers and sisters. The beauty of God can be revealed in your life. The Bible says by His Spirit, He garnished, He beautified the heavens. The Holy Spirit can beautify your life. You show yourself. Brother, come. When the Spirit takes over your soul. Let me show you something. When the Spirit... Over your soul, you will be changed. His glory, watch. Watch what happens now. Jesus. You see, this the power can move from you. Let me show you something else. Is that a bag? Bring that bag. Zip it up. Make sure, make sure you zip it up. Zip it up and give it to me. When the spirit takes over your soul. Come. When the spirit, you stand over there. Come. Stand over there. You will be changed. something else bring that back sister come come hold his back 
like this. And all I want you to do is shout, Jesus! Jesus! Watch what happens now. Watch what follows now. Watch what happens now. Pick her up. Watch what happens. You cannot take this back from her. Watch what happens. Hold this back. Come. Stand here. I'm going to get someone to try to take this back from you. All you're going to do is shout, Jesus. All right? When the Spirit takes over your soul, when the Spirit comes, what you're going to do is this. Just a moment. Just a moment. Come. Try to take this back from her as though you're a thief. Try to snatch it from her. Now you shout Jesus. All right. When he comes, you shout Jesus. When he comes. Jesus. 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 This. Listen. This is a man with the Holy Ghost. What do you think? Say in the name of Jesus. Just a moment. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Sister, you say in the name of Jesus, you cannot get up. Let him try to get up. Say. In the name of Jesus, you cannot get up. No. You cannot get up. In the name of Jesus. You cannot get up. In the name of Jesus. You cannot get up. In the name of Jesus. You cannot get up. In the name of Jesus. You can't get up. In the name of Jesus. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Just a moment. Do you know what? If we say he should remain here for five hours, this is where it's going to be. He will try to get up, he can't. Brothers and sisters, there is power in the name of Jesus. Tell them in the name of Jesus, rise up. In the name of Jesus, rise up. In the name of Jesus, rise up. Rise up. Rise up. Look at him. What do you think? Some of you are crying. Many of you are crying. What do you think? This is the power of God. There's something about us that a lot of us have not studied yet. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Sing it one more time. Oh, the Spirit takes over your soul. When the Spirit takes over your soul, you will be changed. His glory. Spirit takes over your soul. Worship him and thank you.